It's Friday and we're thinking of justice. And we begin with a reading by Rachel from Psalm 63. This is a reading from Psalm 63 verses 1 to 8. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of floods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night, because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Thank you, Rachel. I wonder, were you ever really hungry? I have to admit that 50 years of a reasonably controlled medical diet has prevented me from ever letting myself get really hungry or indeed stuffing myself too much. It's amazing how such a limitation on life has also turned into such a liberation. Weight issues have never been a problem. But people in our world are hungry, surviving on one meal a day quite often, and just simple food at that. Many of our fellow human beings experience hunger as a daily reality, even when times are what they would term good. How strange that the people like us in the healthy West have increasing likelihoods of suffering obesity, while those in the struggling South and East, the two-thirds world, often go hungry. Jesus sees such injustices and comments on them in the fourth beatitude. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. The hungry are thirsting for justice. The thirsty are longing for equality. They are pursuing God's hand that he would intervene in the unjust world. And this beatitude encourages us to join them in their hunger and thirst for justice and righteousness. What are they hungering for? A friend of mine has recently shared with me a paper that he has written about the ways in which the modern church has at times become preoccupied with a limited mission, that of helping Christians be more spiritual, that they have forgotten God's big mission to bring in the kingdom of Christ's reign. And this beatitude is a challenge to all of us to widen our vision for God's world as a place where his justice and righteousness, his kingdom values are honoured and respected, where the prayer, thy kingdom come, has been answered, where the yearning, thy will be done, is in effect, and where earth is a true reflection of how it is in heaven. I happened to be reading Amos uh, this morning and came across God's familiar challenge to the people of Israel in his day. Amos 5 verse 21. I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you burnt, offer me your burnt offerings and cereal offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fatted beasts I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps I will not listen, but let justice flow down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Religious people like ourselves, dare I say it, need to become more concerned about the injustices being carried on in the name of policing in parts of the US, the miscarriages of justice which continue to happen today all over the world, especially if you're from the wrong side of the tracks, the murder of the innocent in the name of personal rights, and the continuing cry for food and fresh water 
which resounds in the developing world. Psalm 63 captures the other side of the story when it says, O God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. As we hunger for God, let us also thirst for his righteousness and let us work for his justice and rest not until we are satisfied. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we thank you that you have invited us into an eternal relationship with you by your Son as you come among us by your Spirit. Help us to become the sort of kingdom people who are as concerned for justice in the world as we are for our own rights to be people who long for right relationships between police and people, between strong nations and weak nations, between men and women, between the adult and the unborn, between the healthy and the sick, between the haves and the have-nots. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. And may we see this on earth as we believe it is in heaven. Join with me again, praying at the end of this Pentecost week for God's Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, fill my home with peace. Come Holy Spirit, fill my heart with love. Come Holy Spirit, fill my life with your power. Amen. We look forward to hearing words from Dennis tomorrow and then on Sunday at around 10 o'clock uh, our daily service will be broadcast here on the web as well as live at a, a service at Carradoff Church at 10 and at Killeney Church in the car parks at 2 o'clock. See you on Sunday at 10 or 2. Please do come.